Hi guys, I'm Chris Bowden with the National Science Institute. Now, I'm pretty well known for putting stripes on things and especially for painting floors and this certainly isn't the first video that I've done with you guys where we're putting some kind of coating on a floor. I'm doing a big floor project right now and I figured I'd share part of this with you guys and because I get a lot of people that ask me questions about using masking tape and establishing stripes and stuff, I figured I'd make a quick little video series taking you through it step by step on how we do the stripes for like my floors and different accent pieces and stuff like that. So step one, you gotta get it clean. Now I've been, this was a, a pristine painted floor a couple weeks ago, but now I've had to walk on it a lot. And even though I have special shoes that I bought just for walking on this floor and these shoes have never left this room, you still get dust and stuff from the air. So before you paint a section, you wanna make sure it's absolutely clean. So. You can spend a lot of money on tack cloth and stuff like that, but I've already spent a lot of money on masking tape. So you just put some backward sticky side out, roll it around on your hand a little bit. And this is a nice way to just pick up little bits of dust and hair and schmutz and whatnot. And it'll get rid of everything except stray Sharpie marks that are gonna have to be painted over because there's a dot on my floor. I've got opinions about this, but we'll sort that out later. Don't worry, we'll fix it in post. So you just take a minute and this will just pick up any bits of hair, anything just laying on your floor. You may go through a couple pieces of tape doing this, but tape is cheap. And this will actually do a way better job than if you were to like sweep it. If you brought a used broom in here, I'd have to kill somebody. So you just wad up like that, toss it aside, make a new one. So you just go backwards with the tape, sticky side out, wrap it around your hand. You'll get really good with masking tape before you're done doing this. And this is one of the first sections of floor back here. So there's a lot of walking around, a lot of just general floor schmucks. So now we've got it at least fundamentally clean. It's gotta be surprisingly clean if you want the paint to actually stick to it. Now we're doing this piece right here. The piece we're about to do is section R. And that's my layout. In case you're wondering what the finished floor will look like, here's a map. And we are way in the back of the room, section R right here, we're right next to the drum room, which is right there. So we're gonna do this really complicated, weird piece. However, thanks to the fact that we've done T and Q already, R is we can derive the dimensions for R off of T, Q, and O, because O has this little piece right here, and that gives me that line. So I can use that line and this little piece over here from Q and those give me two whole sides and that point. Everything else is just bordering pieces. So this is what I refer to as a derivative piece. I don't actually have to take the time and locate all of these data points on the floor because for pretty much everything up to this point, I've had to measure off the floor and figure out where every one of these is. Are all of the uh, dimensions here, by the way, are in centimeters. So you can see we have from the east wall, the west wall, the south wall, the north wall, there's four points for each one. So I can, and all you really need is two because we're working on a plane, but we put in all four because Mr. Bellatini is awesome. And when you need attention to detail, get an animator. So all of these are very precisely located. But since these all border other pieces, I can just grab a laser 
and the hours of work he spent computing this particular piece are absolutely for nothing because I have it all, which is cool. So we're gonna start with a basic layout. And this will vary depending on what you're painting, but a lot of the principles that I'm gonna cover here apply to what you're doing. So watch and learn. Maybe some of the stuff rattling around in my brain will end up rattling around in yours. So I've got my big tape, my skinny tape, I've got my laser level, which is all working great. I got a nice stainless rule, a little one, exacto knife, and that's pretty much all I need for this stage to lay this out. But it means we get to talk about tape. Now I'm doing tape for masking, for painting on a floor. And this floor is really rough because all this floor is, is plywood. There's nothing special about it at all. It's a medium grade plywood where the top is really smooth, a, a nice veneered you know, stack. The inner stacks of the veneer are like plywood dust, sawdust, LDF, MDF, whatever. And it's got like the big chip fillers on the bottom where they filled the knot holes in it, but that's on the bottom so you don't see that. This is single surface, really good plywood. The floor is all made of three quarter inch plywood on a two by four frame. And this has two coats of our basic floor paint. We're using high gloss. It's a Dutch boy acrylic enamel high gloss floor paint. It's really good stuff. I like it a lot. Um, I know that a lot of you guys are used to watching me work with Rust-Oleum. They're a sponsor and we love them. But for this particular application, I went with this particular paint because for me it works better. Just for this. Because this is just painted plywood and it was just roller on super thick, it's a very orange peeled finish because it's got the it's got the finish of the plywood with a lot of paint gooped on it. So you could do this with like a really nice masking tape. Like when I do cars and stuff like that, I use the yellow 3M fine line tape. But at those prices, I'm not gonna do an 800 square foot recording studio in super expensive tape. Also, this comes in bigger widths. I've tried, I've painted a lot of floors. I've done a lot of stripes. I've tried every brand of masking tape under the sun, and they're not a sponsor, but they should be. I'm using 3Ms. Um, this is their blue series of tape, and I've got a crate with every size you can think of. And for this application, this is absolutely the best tape. If I'm doing walls, floors, things that aren't absolutely smooth, like a, like a car body work, this is the best tape. I've tried all the other brands. I like this the best. The absolute worst is the classic beige masking tape because where you'll see as we go that my tape is on there for a few days. The beige stuff is not going to come off clean. If, if, you need, if, if you need it for five minutes, the beige stuff is fine. But for anything serious, any of my work, I like the blue. So now you know. Um, and you're going to go through lots of it. Just get used to that. So let's start by laying out our shape. This is a cool shape to lay out because I'm going over existing paint, which is already cured. And I'm on raw floor and I've got a bridge between the two and I've got like lumps and gaps and holes and just all kinds of fun stuff to deal with. So let's start with laying it out. I do my borders in the wider tape. This is about, well here, let's measure it. I have a rule right here. Um, for the Americans, this is inch and seven eighths. For the rest of the world, it's about 28 millimeters. And depending on what package you read, depends on what size this is. If you buy it on Amazon, this is all in millimeters. So for my outer stripes, I use the wide stuff because I want a little extra area for screw up. I use a laser level a lot to establish my lines. If you use a laser level, make sure to get one that has a vertical line. The horizontal line will not help you in this. You need a vertical line. So that's the one that gives me my straight line along the floor. Now I'm gonna need to derive this line out to where it intersects with that line. And you can see here it says Q2 on the layout for section Q, which is here. This was data point two. So I know that is the exact perfect center from here and here. And there's a little tiny pinhole here. I actually use uh, thumbtacks to do my layout and you'll see some of that in a bit. So we're gonna bring the laser level way back. You want like six or eight inches. The light's gonna go all the way out so you don't have to worry about it. But by giving yourself a space here, when you come in with the tape, you can still have the line all the way up. 
So we're here on this point. We got to get here to this point. And now we're right on there. So from here to here establishes my vector off there. And then I got to mark approximately. Well, what I'll do is we'll just take a piece of fat tape. I'm just going to run the whole line. So what I'll do, we'll come out here because I know that's my spot right about, it's going to be right about here. So I'll just go past that a bit. We'll go out to about here and start. Now I want to be on the outside of the line for here because the inside is my space. And I know you guys aren't going to be able to see the laser line very well at all, but I don't want to do this in the dark. So you can see I've got my laser line out here and it's right down my tape like that. So the way I'm doing this is you pull out a section of tape and that's all we're going to need. So we'll just stop right there and you hold the tape up rather high, bring your hand in and I can see it right on the side of my hand and bring it down and I've got my line. Now because I'm intersecting with previous colors here, I'm going to tweak that a little bit because I want to just kiss that edge. And sometimes they're, you know, plus or minus a hair. I'll pull that off. So that's our first line. And this doesn't actually go over any colors. We've got a little bit of a groove here that we're going to gently push it. One of the nice things about the blue tape is it, if with just really light thumbnail pressure, you can get it to follow into a groove. Now, if you push too hard on that because this groove is so deep, you'll cut the tape there and you'll get a nice straight cut, which is cool but you want to find any irregularities in your floor and just run a thumbnail in them. You're going to spend a lot of time using your thumbnail when it comes to putting down tape and really work that edge, run the whole edge with your hand and make sure there's no wrinkles and that this is bonded down nice. So now let's derive our other side. Now we're going to shoot this one from the outside in because this is up against a wall and all I got to do is line it up for the tip here and the tip there and as long as my laser line touches this whole line I know that wherever I end up out here is the right spot. And you can put your finger in there to help. So we got to come this way a little bit. Ooh, that looks good. Yeah, so that's our line right there. And you can see we're just touching along this edge perfectly. If you do this long enough, I have now hit the point in doing this where my laser line is my tolerance because it's actually like an eighth inch wide at the surface here and it gets fatter as it goes. So my laser line is my tolerance. So this whole thing has a tolerance of eh, two millimeters, give or take, most of the time. So we're going to pull this out and that's all we need for the whole line. And now I want a little up the wall. Keep a piece of tape on your leg and then you can use this as a spot for things like that. Now we're going to lay this in approximately. I know that's just about where I want to be. And then I'm going to place it over here where I'm, because this I have to match up to existing paint and it's got to be perfect. So. And then I want to go down a little bit, wrap over the edge and then up the wall. And that'll give me a tear surface when I do this. 
Okay, now that's good. Now I'm gonna take this all off up to that point. And now I'm gonna, because I want this to be perfectly on. Place that there. Now some people think that because the tape is straight, if you just lay the tape down, you'll get a perfectly straight line. That is absolutely 100% not true. Also this edge right here, run your thumbnail along it and that pushes the tape down. Otherwise it'll, you've got two pieces of tape and you've got this little gap down here. You wanna set that gap really tight. So thumbnail that. And then you can, here's a useful thing. Sometimes you need to tear tape sharply. So you can lay this down like that. It'll give you a nice sharp edge. That works really well about 90% of the time, except when you're trying to show it off to somebody and then you screw it up. I'm kind of amazed that actually worked. But, you wanna make sure the tape is off the stripe here. We're, we're only on floor. There's just a hair's breadth of white there. You wanna make sure there's no bubbles in your tape and that you're on the line. I will show you as we do this that not only does tape not make a straight line, but you can turn it and bend it to whichever direction you want. We're gonna learn that as we go. But first, I'm gonna take a minute and finish filling out all the rest of these pieces, so I'll be back in a second. I gotta clean this up. Because where we're about to paint is inside this whole area, so these tails gotta come off. So you thumbnail that. Really lightly cut that because too deep and you go through the paint. And peel that off. And then this one here. Now I've got a nice sharp point there. So that's our inside, and we're masked all the way over to here. Now I gotta get down to Q4. Finally, I get to take this off, because we're about to paint in here. Now this one has to go on the outside. I could sight it, but I don't need to. And I've got enough in here that I can see it really well. We're there, we're there, we're there, 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 and that's our point. And now, just in that one little section, you gotta push that down really good there. Where the tape bridges over existing paint, you wanna come in on those edges and just run a thumbnail down there and you'll feel it, you'll, it's, it's very obvious. So you wanna make sure that you're really well pushed down all over that because otherwise capillary action is gonna suck that paint down in there. You wanna seal all those edges. It can take a lot on some of the sections and this is easy, I only got three stripes there, but when you go through like a huge area, you gotta get every single stripe and you gotta seal these edges because if you don't, you're gonna spend a long time doing touch up and you'll do this so much that it will become like a nervous habit. You'll just, as you move around, you'll just be thumbing edges. So where's my point? I gotta grab a tack. So one of the things I use a lot of is just little pushpin thumbtacks, okay? And you can get these at your local office supply place. They're cheap, you buy a box of 100 of them or whatever and you'll use these for locator marks because when you have the holes for them, you 
can see the holes through the tape. And I have, and I have a little tack hammer that I use just as, and just two light little taps, just, and you're good, and that'll set it enough. Don't drive them all the way flat, you want them way up high, because if you do that, you can do this trick I'm about to do, and you'll like it. So for our next section over here, I've got to do this line like that and see, that's my location all the way up to intersecting this line and I'm in white space there so I could laser it. If it was longer I would, but it's short. Now I need to have my tape on the outside of the line. So we're going to go that far. Set that right there like that. So you set your first end, come in here, grab that point, grab that point, grab that point, grab that point. You can see I'm just tapping the tape down in various areas and that'll be my end. And then go back and lay it flat. Because this part of floor here, there's a big drip from the underlaying paint. This is down in the white. So it's a lot of things, but flat ain't one of them. You'll never notice it in the finished floor. But when you're at this stage where you're on your hands and knees all the time, it'll really stick out. So we're gonna do a really good job Sealing that down. Now I don't know where my ending is, but I don't have to because I know it's gonna come off of this line that way and I'm about to tape that and all these little stripes have to be sealed. So they're just gonna show up. I've only got maybe a half inch here to bridge and that's the tape isn't gonna be perfectly straight, but it's gonna be fine for the amount of not perfectly straight. And now that I've got these two lines that cross and I've got that sorted, I can pull that pin and just smush this down because this is gonna be our painted edge in here. So we'll come back and trim those off in a second. So now we're gonna freehand this edge, which we can because we have all these stripes to work off of and I know those were done to a paint line so I know they're good except for that one, which has a little peely corner. We're gonna have to fix that. That'll make you crazy. It's all right. The real annoying thing is I'm gonna forget about that and I'm gonna peel this tape off of it later on. So I'm gonna mark this tape that says peel in this direction so that we don't mess up that corner. So we're gonna go right here and now I'm just gonna set my tape over there line this up pretty close. Set that down. That's my first one. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight. And you can see, you hold the tape, get it down the closer you get to the end. So you can have it right down. And now that I've got that, I can smush that out and that'll hold it pretty good. And I'm working right tight to the edge of these, as close as I can get. And then just run that off. And I've got a point here. So I'm gonna pull that up, and go to that point. And now we have to seal all these little edges, just like that. The whole process is very tedious. This is detail oriented. And the time you spend doing all of this preparation, doing the taping right, doing all the tedious parts, is going to be rewarded 
by a factor of five in the time you'll save when you peel the tape off, when it all just works. Because if you do it right, if you, I know this is crazy tedious, but if you do it right, you're gonna get the results you want. If you don't, you're gonna end up with a lot of touch-up paint. And I know this because that's how I started. I didn't have the luxury of watching a YouTube video on how to do this. <laughs> I had to be stupid and figure it all out myself, which is why we have things like truncated corner here, and that's a little bit bent, which tells me this peeled up and tore off and I haven't touched it up yet. But you know, you also, some of them turn out all right, and you get a really nice sharp edge here. And I got a little bleed off over on this edge because when I did this section, I hadn't figured out that you have to prime it in a very special way as your first layer of paint. So watch the differences between this, which is my oldest first section in here, and what we're doing now, which is like, I don't know, I'm like 15, 20 sections in. So yeah, now we gotta do this. And here I've got big white spaces. So for this one, we're gonna grab another tool. I have a piece of just acrylic. Uh, There's nothing special here, it's just plexiglass. And it's, oh, about two millimeters, three millimeters thick. And this one is cut to eight centimeters wide. And you'll see why we have these in a bit. But for here, I'm using it as a straight edge because I can just lay it right on there. Oh, I gotta go this way, we're on the outside of the line. And I can just line it up along that edge, and I'm good. And then lay the tape out. Now, a lot of people, when they mask, do it with complete disregard for the number of pieces of tape they're using when they, like if they set a line, they do this like, pssst, and then the next piece, pssst, pssst, and all separate pieces of tape. It will take you your first day of pulling masking to realize that it really does matter how many pieces of tape you use. And if you can do a line in only one piece of tape, do it. Use as few separate pieces of tape as you possibly, reasonably, practically can. Because it's one of those time-saving things when it comes time to take it off. Ooh, that's ugly. Let's do better. Pull that out on that flat. Now I had a little wrinkle here, but you just thumb that out. Okay, and then we're gonna start up here on our corner. Lay that in tight, make sure we get into that gap a little bit. Make sure we're smooth down the whole stripe and the next space, come up this line. Even if our point's a little ugly, find out what's there and clean that in. There. That's good. Now we don't have to mask off this side except just along the wall because every now and then, as you can see right here, I am a klutz and end up with paint gob on the wall. Thankfully, I have gray touch up paint. It'll be fine. But we'll do this one. Now this is easy because this, you just pull your piece. You want to go just a little bit under. And I'll put two on there because I want for when I hit it with the roller, I want to make sure I got plenty of room. And we're gonna come way over to here. And this is arbitrary, so we don't care where we end up. We'll just run that right up there like that. It can be ugly, it doesn't have to be straight just there for protection of the wall. You want this one to overlap a little bit? There. 
now we're protected. And another one for the empty pile. Save your empty rolls as you do the entire project so that you can pile them up and count them at the end. It will give you a feeling of accomplishment. I do this on all my projects. Because if you do a big striping thing, somebody is going to ask, how much tape do you use for that? That's handy to be able to tell them. On a full day, if you're really rocking it and the measurements aren't too bad, you can easily go through two rolls of tape in a day. And that's on big scale stuff like this. I don't, I don't even want to know what like real professionals do. I'm just doing stupid art. So now our section is entirely laid out and we have our outline. All I have to do is trim off the inside corners and we're good to start our striping. And now I'm looking at the plan and we're actually going to have converging stripes of three different sizes. The actual stripes are going to be 15 centimeters wide and the gaps are gonna be on about three quarters of this, a 23 centimeter gap. And on the other side, they're gonna be a six centimeter gap. So it's gonna be kind of screwy, but here, I'll let you take a look at it. Now, the way I'm gonna do this is, the cool thing about the way we designed this is the actual stripes are fundamentally, they're arbitrary. And that gives me a lot of wiggle room for exactly what I want. But that's the look we're going for. And they're gonna have a break and instead of a six centimeter gap over here, we're actually gonna end up with just about a five centimeter gap because I have two and a half centimeter tape and I can just double lay this and that makes this a lot easier. So we're gonna end up with about a five centimeter gap there. On this side, we need, the, the real thing that matters the most is we need 15 centimeter stripes, two and a half centimeter tape. So I grab a 10 centimeter spacer and I've made these in a bunch of sizes, like this is 10, this is eight, and I've got a 20.5 centimeter over there because that's how we're going to get our 23 centimeter gap. They're gonna be a little bit bigger than that, but it's gonna work. So that's the plan. So what you need to do is figure out the angle of these stripes. That's hard. There's about a million different ways to do it. I've tried probably half of them. And the best way that I've come up with to get them really where you want them to be. You're about to see my ultimate secret for how I laid out all the stripes and got them pointing in the right direction. Prepare yourself because this gets deep. Now, Steven was kind enough to give me measurements here for the start of the stripe. So I need, I, I know that from that apex right there, I've got to come down 15 centimeters for my first stripe and that'll end up giving me the right start and then I gotta do is match the angle. So, high tech system. I don't have a Sharpie, but I have this and I got a little hammer around it. Oh, there it is, okay. So we're coming down 15 centimeters from the apex right there. And that's gonna put me right there. Make a little mark. So that's 15 centimeters down, and this is my 10 centimeter thing, because I need a 15 centimeter stripe. So I drop that on top. And now here's the secret to how we do the angles. These are transparent. So I can put this under here and I know that angle is that side and I can line that parallel to the side. And then when this matches the angle of the stripes, I know I'm there and that's my angle. So you put your hand on this you slide that out, make sure everything's, yep, we're good. So that's my angle. And, <laughs> and I know I got a stripe starting here and I know it's gonna be 15 centimeters thick. So, I 
I need a wider thing. Yep. This is why you always take a minute and stop and think. If I put the tape line down, it's gonna, it'll mess it up and you'll understand we, where we go, but I need a 15 centimeter wide thing. So I'm going to do some shopping and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got a 15 centimeter, centimeter wide thing and we're just gonna put another tack right here. That'll maintain my angle. Not gonna need that. So that's our stripe. Our stripe is below the 15, so that's our stripe right there. Put a knee on it, pull the tacks, won't need those. Now, what's our gap? 23. So we'll see how close we can get to that, but we'll start with this. So the way I do it, here's the handhold. Pinch the reel against your hand on this side, drop it down. You want to go halfway onto the tape, give or take. That's just being neat. Bring it up against the thing. Drop it on there and you're looking down. This is really hard to do slow. You're looking down to make sure that you're touching the full width. Go halfway over the thing and then pop it up. There's your first strip. Now this is an absolute straight edge. It was, we, we cut it relatively precision. The tape, and this is gonna be hard to show you guys, but we'll pull it off. The tape, depending on how you hold it, you can make it bow out or in just by flexing a little bit. And depending on the distance that you're moving, you can make it bow in or out considerably. So I'm gonna get my spacing established and then we're gonna take you guys through this and how I do this. And as you go, you wanna make sure you really get those edges down. So I need 23 centimeters. 20 and a half. That's gonna be close enough. It'll work. So I've got this piece here that's 20 and a half. And if I line it up, about here. It's gonna give me a nice big gap. It's not 23 centimeters, but it'll be close enough that I'll be able to live with myself. So for my gap here, you just line up to the bottom of the tape. That's gonna give me two and a half centimeters there, 20 and a half here, and then another two and a half centimeters. So 25 and a half, I can live with that. Ah, we don't continue on, we stop there, so we're cool. So when you do this, place this end first. Lightly run your hand along, and you can do it on short ones like this because you can just sight it right there and it won't wiggle too much, but just very lightly run your hand down and that just sets the tape down. And then really seal it, go back because that'll, you won't have any like roll outs like that. The tape won't stretch. And just drop that down smooth and make sure it's nice and smooth. And then we grab our 15 and we do our next stripe. Now the distance, the, the width on the stripes is gonna be the width 
of your template. Okay, so this is the width of my stripe from there to here. The width of the gap is not from here to here. The width of the gap is plus tape. So this 20 and a half centimeters plus two and a half and two and a half because that's your whole open space. Because when you pull it out, that's, that's your, your paint line. So let me line this up here. And you want to make sure, as you do this, to take your time and make really sure that you don't have any tape scooting under the spacer or rolling up against the side of the spacer. You'll, you'll see a little crease form when you lay it down. And that you want to make sure it isn't bowed out anywhere because this, this is highly mobile. You can move it in or out quite a bit. template to fight the position. Now this is getting pretty long, so you're going to do it in sections. I don't have to go all the way to the wall because there's going to be a line somewhere around here where all those break off that way and these will all get trimmed off. So those are just tails hanging there for now. We'll come back to those. When you have to do this in sections, the way I do it is very similar to how I do the laser lines. And that's have your tape reel up, pull it out to where you need it, place it, and I go about six inches usually, and then stop, and then there. You just leapfrog them down. This is a particularly easy one. You don't have to worry about this edge lining up here, up there, because that's straight you care about this edge coming down here and you just need the tiniest little bit. You can actually bridge over a little bit on occasion when you need to. You'll get a feel for it. Let's take a minute and cover some of the ways this can go wrong and how to spot them and how to fix them. Because this ain't rocket science, but you can do it. Okay, so you've got your tape. We're just gonna pull off just a piece of tape here to show you this. This will be hard to see, but I'll try to make it visible. Here's some of the ways you can screw this up. Either it's bowed out like this, and that's a really extreme example, but you can see I've got probably five millimeters there. And if you run that down, we're touching at each end. We hit the line, but we're way out here. Okay, even after smushing that down, it's probably three millimeters there. So that's, that's way out. So that's way one to screw that up. If you go in too far, now I'll hold the ends. These are perfectly on line there. And you can see, you can bring that in like that. And if I drop that down and smush it, now you can see, you see a nice straight line. I can work that in there. And looking straight down on it, it's nice, but when you're back here, you can see all that tape up the edge. And there's so much sticking up there, I can actually grab it and pull it out. So that's not gonna work. Because there's no seal to it at all. You can also get it under there. That doesn't happen very often, and you'll see it when it happens, but you gotta be careful that you don't get under there. So here's how you do it. Here's how you, this is how you become a tape bender. You pull your line. Now when I put the tape down here, look at my thumb down on this end, and I've got, it's stuck to my finger, just on the tip, and you put your thumb perpendicular to the tape, and you pinch it, and you can pull easily hard enough to break the tape. On this end, this is my, my grip. I've got a couple fingers inside holding the roll. This finger is my pinch finger for tearing and then this finger just kind of hangs out, ready for tea. Now, most of the bending is done on the left hand. If you, if you pinch it and you pull the, the far edge of the tape, you know, towards the thumb tip, and you pull that, 
and you do the same thing on this side, you can see, and we'll sight it against the straight line here, you can see the tape bows out by a lot. And that's just in about two and a half feet of span on this one. Okay, the tape line bows way out. If you do the exact opposite move and bend this hand inward, going like that, same thing over here, you can, and the tape is flat. You're, the, the tape isn't like bowing way out or anything, or the, the tape isn't curling up or anything. The tape will come in. So the tape will stretch as it goes down and you can see just how much you can wiggle it, which is quite a lot. And with that, it allows you to set a precise line. So we're gonna go back here and I'm gonna just line it up right to the end. And sometimes I'll go off the end because it makes it a little easier to see. So you set that right there and then bring this in and I'm just picking a comfortable place. I could go all the way to the end if I really you know, worked out my wingspan, but that's a comfortable place and just you bring the tape down because where the reel is, the, the spool, doesn't matter. It's the tape itself. So you bring that down to the plane, drop it right in there, and then place this, and then work your way up. And you can see that's perfectly on there. And then you come out and do the next one. Perfectly on there. Get your tail. and you're set. And then leapfrog and do it again. So I'm gonna, here I'll show you a common thing you have to do a lot. Frequently, you have to leapfrog a spacer. So you set up your line, you're good. So there's your tape stripe in. And if this is in your way, lay it down. The tape will stay right there, it's okay. So you set your line here. You wanna overlap as much as you can, reasonably. The more overlap you have from your previous established line, the more true your new line's gonna be. And then just continue this. Right on out. Oh, it moved, see that? If you look right there, you can see it's out by a full millimeter. So we just grab this, back peel it, lay it in there, set that down. Now you're gonna get what's called a compound error. It's gonna happen if you lay stripes this way. And the trick with stripes is if you have regular stripes, the human eye is really good at finding flaws in a pattern. So what a compound error is, is in each one of these stripes, I'm going to be off by, I don't know, anywhere from thousandths of an inch to a millimeter. And because I'm basing this stripe, like as I'm laying this out, it's one stripe, then the next, and the next, and I base each stripe off the tape line of the previous stripe. So as I go, any little errors in there are all going to add up. So this stripe, if you did this, if you measured out the distances of all the stripes, we're gonna be off by a mile. But the errors are very small in between each stripe, and in this application of just painting stripes on the floor, you can get away with a lot. So that is a thing to be aware of, and I know there's people that are gonna comment on it. Yes, we are getting an additive or a compound error in this, but I'm putting stripes on the floor. It doesn't really matter that much. And really the point of this video is to teach you how to do good masking. It's really important that when you're laying out stripes for painting like this with uh, with you know like a house type paint, you can get away with it with a car. Because car paint behaves very differently. And anybody who wants to comment on this and critique my technique using car technology, it's all different guys. I, I've done cars, um, there's a video on that. Cars are different, the paint is so much thinner and the rules are totally different set of skills with you know house paint the paint is very viscous and much tougher
And uh, when you're doing the taping with house paint, you can't have the same piece of tape hit two stripes. Like here, the, the clear space has to be two different pieces of tape. If it's one piece of tape, you won't be able to pull it off in a way where you don't get peeling like crazy ripping this off because you'll be pulling it back angle on one or the other. So, and you'll see it here as we do stuff, this open space, that's hitting one stripe and this is hitting the next stripe. There's nothing here to hit. You have to have a space. It's easy on big spaces. It's much harder on smaller ones. I hate it when we do that. We're gonna close out on a gap. I like it when there's a stripe at the point, but for this one, that'll be a gap there, a small gap. This will be our last stripe in it. There. That's all our main stripes laid out. So now there's a line, and we gotta figure out where that line is, that's gonna give us a break, and all these stripes are gonna pssst. So now we've got the zig, and now we've gotta make them zag. So we're gonna figure that out. All right, so we've got relatively close sized stripes and gaps, and it's easy to lose your place. So what I like to do is have a Sharpie, and we know that's our first stripe and this is our first gap. So here you write an S and a G. And do that on each end. And that way you can just be like, where am I? And look over and then be like, oh, okay. So we know this is a stripe and we know the stripe on this side needs to be 15 centimeters. And all we have to do is figure out our angle and make it head out jauntily. So we left really long tails on here, and I can just... Oh wow, that gets extreme. Okay. So we gotta figure out where our line's gonna be. And we're gonna need one line right down a thing. And thankfully, Mr. Bellatini gave me a good spot to work that out from. And it's right about there. Okay. So I'm going to set this right about there. And it needs to be a little bit off parallel, but just a bit. About like that. It's a good spot. And we're just gonna run a tape line down there so that we can figure this out. This tape line is temporary. It is only going to be here for layout purposes. Oh. Why am I doing it the hard way? I'm gonna use a laser because I need to see further than that and I don't have anything to base this off of. So I'm just gonna set an arbitrary laser line because I wanna follow my arbitrary line very precisely. Yeah, that's a good spot, okay.
Okay. So that's where all our lines are gonna break. We'll grab our paper. We know that's a stripe. We know we want 15 centimeters. And we know we want it at a jaunty angle that looks like that. So they're gonna, they're gonna go up about thus. Okay, so here's the thing. All of my stripes are gonna break with the top half of the stripe on the inside point there. So that's the ones I care about, and I'm gonna mark these. I was grabbing from my Sharpie. I usually write on my shirt, but I have a microphone there right now. So I'm gonna mark that as the point that I care about. And I'm gonna go down here to the next stripe, and that's the point I care about. And the next stripe. You wanna keep track of this, and it's easy to do at this stage. But once you're, and it's, it's nothing here with like five stripes, but you do this with like 50 stripes and they're small, you're gonna lose that spot. So this is, think of this like super magnified, really easy. You, you want this. So we're good there. And that's gonna be our angle. And where you come out here doesn't matter. This is all that matters. As long as you have a tape line too here, you're cool. As long as you hit this point and you've got that angle, this is gonna be about the same on every single one, give or take. The weird thing is we're gonna, we're gonna end up with a much narrower stripe here. But we're gonna set them all parallel. We'll see how it plays out and we'll go from there. But there's gonna be, it's gonna get weird, you'll see. I don't really know how to explain it, but. Contact three blue, one brown. He'll break it down for you. So we're only gonna need a little piece here. Now, I'm gonna put a tape line here that we're gonna throw away because we'll want this for paralleling in a minute. No, that'll be the other side of my thing. I want that. Okay, we'll do this one for reals. We'll care about it. Okay, I'll pull that out. And now this tape line here matters to there because that is our new stripe. And it doesn't look like it yet, but if I grab that and I grab, oh, there's my short one, okay. So this is our stripe here, which means we're gonna cut out some pieces of tape. So that is our stripe. And then the gap is gonna get a little weird. We can just leave that piece in there, it doesn't matter. We have to trim this section out, but we'll come back to that. All right. So all we care about is the 15 centimeter thing. So when we come down here, we want that to be parallel. So I'm gonna take this, grab that line right there. And now I'm a little shy but I want my line on the other side of that. So we're gonna set down a guideline because you can sight parallel lines pretty good, close enough for this. And there are 
way more precise and way more complicated and way more time consuming ways to do this. This is not the most accurate way to do what I'm showing you because what I want is a tape line that's going to end up right there. Okay, and I'm inside my stripe. And I don't know if I've got a good enough spot. I might be too close. I am too close because that piece of tape will go down over it. So we'll go on the other side of the line and we'll be fine. So we just scooch this back to the other side here because I, what I want is my tape line to go right there up like that and I want it to be absolutely parallel to this. They gotta, they gotta line up or it'll look weird. But I don't have an exact spacer for that weird distance. So this is how you fake it. And this is why transparent templates are really handy because it lets me see where I am and all that jazz. So I'm gonna take that out of there. And now I can just drop this on there and between this line and this line being parallel and this line and this line being parallel, I can tell where I'm at and I can get pretty close. Because what matters is that this hits this apex dead on. And by having the other things as guides, yeah, you're gonna be off by a degree or two, but nobody's gonna see it. Nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna care. So. You have to decide on your own. See, and I can see here that's exaggerated because I'm way longer than my stripe is. I'm off. I went, it's too far, it's too much. So I'm gonna go back to there. It takes a minute, but now I take my rule and I call that 16 millimeters. Right down here. And I'm off. I'm not there yet. And I could just call Batman and say, cut me a spacer. Yeah, that's good. But that spacer would only work for this particular shape. And why do that? See the arrow? I should be covering the arrow. I should be on top of the arrow, and I'm just under the arrow. You will make that mistake a thousand times of putting the tape on the wrong side of the line. So, it's easy to fix. You just... Well, I know I've got that line sighted right now. I know I'm perfect. So... Instead of just throwing that dimension away, I can grab another skinnier one. Gently cozy it up to it. And now I've got overlaying pieces of tape and I can really see very clearly where I'm at. I can pull that out gently and that's my tape line. Yeah, it looks good. So this is where I wanted to be. That's why it's handy to have more than one template straight edge. I 
wants to go down a little more. And then up like that. Okay. And now where the many lines cross. I'm gonna leave our guide piece for a moment. So that's a gap, that's a stripe here. So all this goes away, all this goes away. So that's out. That's that stripe. So you can see we've got stripe two, stripe three. Stripe one is up there and doesn't make the bend, but And now I gotta do is find this, but since I know my stripe is 15 centimeters wide, I drop this on and wherever it ends up is the right spot because that number doesn't matter. So we just Grab that. Ah, that's on there. Then we take this back to here. I'll pull this out, make it a little easier for you to see. Place your thumb on the thing like that. You want a little bit of nail and then like that. You get a clean edge. Or you can razor blade it, but I just, and as long as it's on there, you're fine. Okay, done. Let's do the next one. Okay, and that is our last piece down. So now we have our shape worked out. We have a couple pieces to trim way back in stripe one. And as we work our way there, we got to set all these edges. And this is just thumbnail work. So you go along and you check everything. Make sure you're good all over because you're going to be putting paint down in the stripes. So these edges have to be perfect, especially all the way up to the ends. Now there won't be any paint in here, so you don't have to worry about that. But inside the stripes, you gotta... Okay, and I'm just gonna do the whole thing from one end to the other. All right guys, so now you know everything you need to know about putting tape on floor. That's the end of video one. We're gonna be back in part two, where we're gonna talk about priming. Part three is gonna be painting, and part four is gonna be peeling, and that's, that's your big finish. But 
This was the big hard one. There's a lot to it. A lot of it's very subtle. A lot of it's really fussy. And this will get you 90% of where you need to be for whatever project you're working on, for whatever masking you're doing. But it's a good basic beginner thing on serious masking. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. We'll see you in part two. And as always, we'll see you next time.